Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to my channel here at Horsepower Warehouse. Before we get into today's content, just wanted to let you guys know, I actually bought a car recently. I posted it to YouTube Shorts. Check it out. If you're interested in seeing content on it, drop a comment down below. I'm excited about it. I wanna see if you guys wanna see some more about my uh, new Copo that I just bought. So, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. Today's video, the title, and the thumbnail is going to be about a shortcoming that I, we have known about but I haven't addressed yet on this channel and that is regarding the transmissions in these C2 Corvettes particularly the later editions of the M20 as seen right here out of this 67 Bloomington Gold 427. Now this engine or this transmission rather has a really bad design flaw. What am I talking about? This guy. This is an anti-backlash ring, right? This is only found in the very latest design of the M20 on these cars. Now, essentially what this does is it's held in by three rivets that, long story short, they back out and destroy the case of the transmission. This is actually attached to the counter gear that is in the transmission. It's like that. And it actually, when the rivets back out, grinds up the case of your tranny and really creates a big mess. You can see the rivet here is, is separated, but these are the guys that I'm talking about that just love to, to back out and create a mess. When we rebuild these transmissions, we absolutely take this and yeet it. It goes straight into the trash can. Um, most transmission guys, if you ask them about the M20, they call it the, the star of death or the ring of death or whatever you want to call it. The, the anti-backlash plate is just a, a real nightmare of a design um, on these transmissions. So I'm very careful to make sure that this thing and all of its assembly is just yeeted into the trash can. No way am I going to put a bad design in my freshly rebuilt transmission, even if it's for a Bloomington Gold car, I'm not going to, in the sake of making things, you know, correct. <laughs> Is it correct to have this in it? Yeah, but it, it's a bad design. So there, um, it's a, a definite plus that this guy brought his transmission to me to be rebuilt, if nothing else, so I could get this plate out of it. As you can see, the, the rivets were actually starting to back out and it did start to just kiss his case a little bit. We cleaned it up, there is no damage, thank God. Um, who knows how much longer he would have been able to drive it before it did cause damage, but hey, you know, you know, we're in the clear now because we, we circumvented it before it happened. So if you guys have a 66, 67 Corvette with a four speed M20, the, I'm talking to you. You might want to make sure you don't have that anti-backlash plate in there. And I'm also going to drop a video in the description of a guy that specializes in, tra specializes in transmissions and he did a really in-depth video that explains this a little bit further than I'm going to today. So let's just keep proceeding forth. I'm not gonna walk right past this because last time I showed you I had the vintage air kit here on the table. As you can see, I've made some pretty considerable progress with that. Condenser is in, dryer is in, the lines are in. Those lines just fit so nice. Good job, Vintage Air. Uh, you guys know how I am about making sure everything fits nice and tidy. You can't even see that metal line. Um, I, I hit it behind the, the bypass here. So compressor is in, belts are on. condenser unit or evaporator unit rather is mounted in here um, lower vent I have the defroster vent in there so yeah definitely making some progress on the vintage air um, that is not a fun unit to squeeze in there behind that z-bar in the dash I mean I tell you what guys that's got to be the worst part of the entire installation um, but you know it, it's tight but it fits I mean you can see it it's in there so let's go ahead and 
Oh, by the way, guys, you can see it's got the gasket in it. This is all fresh, brand new. Let's go ahead and set it, you know, what, four inches away, one finger should close like that. That doesn't happen on its own. That is through a lot of messing around and getting it to fit right. Um, my body guy has to be on point and then I gotta be on point with my installation of the striker and the latch, so um, that sucks to do. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's, that's really not fun, but that's the final result that I aim for. Um, just so we don't skim through and miss anything, my Saddle 63 is on the rotisserie. We are doing fiberglass repair, continues on that car. In addition, or in conjunction with the chassis being built over here. So we're making progress on that car on both fronts. This one has been up and down two dozen times. I'm working engine bay, interior, and under the car all at once. This one's back from paint and the chassis is already done. So this 63 is, you know, progressing along trying to make it to where this one pretty much is. This one is, I mean, I'm on the, the home stretch here, guys. I, I don't rush anything in my process. I take my time all the way through, but man, I'm, I'm excited to have this one done and the, the customer, I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to be able to enjoy this car. So my 66 NASCAR, Nassau car is just about done. The 67, I showed you guys last time, the exhaust panel. We now have this one slated to go into paint. Once we have the engine and everything back, we're going to, of course, clean up the body and then she's going off to paint. This one has been waiting for a chassis. I mean, I, I've been really struggling to find a clean, non-bent um, C2 chassis, guys. I tell you what, it's just, I don't know if I'll ever find one, but we'll, uh, we'll keep trying. <laughs> the 63 over here, or 64 um, convertible is just about ready to go down onto the chassis. Um, so much fiberglass work involved in this as far as the repair side of things. I actually had my painter come through here and kind of have a meeting with me about all of the, the repairs that I had and how I can make it more substantial. Um, I know I did above and beyond on everything, but before I made that body to that chassis, now is my time to do these repairs above and beyond it and go make sure that 30, 40, 50 years down the line, this car is not going to crack again unless you hit it into a wall. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. I am confident now that all my repairs are done beautifully. My painter said, hey, you know, we can bolster even further if you want a couple of areas. And of course, I'm just gonna do it. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with my 64 convertible here. By the way, guys, I, I was just kidding. That chassis is for the 67. So I did find a clean, unbent, unrusted C2 chassis. So I'm excited to have that. We're going to do some, you know how I am about messing with everything. So I'm gonna make this one a lot better and nicer before I send it off to powder coat, but that is the chassis for my 67 coupe there. Let's roll on through past that bad boy Roadrunner. Quite the selection of cars we've got here. Last time I showed you guys the 63, um, I'm glad I actually got it on film before it sold because you can see on the windshield, it is sold. If you guys were to buy this car and turn it into a resto mod, I'm curious, what would be important to you? You know, what is a must have on a resto mod split window? Is, are you more of a wheels, tires, and brakes guy? Do you have to have the carbon ceramics or are you all about the suspension? You know, is your money best focused on interior? What do you guys really want in your resto mods? I'm curious to know your, your opinion because you, you're my people, the, the Corvette crew. This one, believe it or not, check out how fresh this interior is. 617 miles. I guarantee you, you'll never see a Cougar with 600 miles again. Really cool Malibu, convertible, Challenger, RT. 
and a loud color combination. Neat lifted GMC back there. You can see we also have a Corvair peeking around the corner. But today I wanna to cap things off with this, the Chevelle. Now, you can tell by the stance, things are not factory. Before we even make our way around to the hood area, what do you think is in here? A big block? Maybe a spicy small block? Ah. Automatic, hmm, aftermarket gauges. Well, if you guess small block, you're right, but LS with turbocharger. Yes, yes, that is a spicy little combination. I like it for a street car. That is awesome. Automatic LS turbo Chevelle. Yes, man. If I didn't have so many projects going on, I'd buy this thing in a heartbeat and turn it into my daily driver. Speaking of projects, I got a lot to show you guys. I'm not ready to yet, but thank you for uh, staying tuned with me and supporting my channel. If you do like my channel and you're not subscribed, I genuinely would appreciate that. Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in to me and until next time, take care.